believe it or not, we all have boundaries of some sort. Um, we're going to examine what they are, what it means, how healthy they are, whether they're still working for you, especially during this time uh, in our lives. Um, well, a boundary. What's a boundary? Um, maybe next slide, Marie. Boundary is pretty much knowing where you end and another person begins. Now that's pretty simplistic, isn't it? Uh, but physically, emotionally, socially, psychologically, spiritually, um, sometimes we don't think in terms of all those dimensions, but they all make us who we are today. Um, we all have them by virtue of our development, um, what we're born with biologically. Maybe you're an introvert, maybe you're an extrovert, um, maybe you're an overly sensitive person. Those all need to be thought about in terms of your self-examination. Um, also, what you learn during your upbringing. Um, some of us were told that children are seen and not heard. <laughs> so we keep our thoughts and feelings to ourselves. Um, Others of us were encouraged to be outspoken and forthright. Um, and from all of this, a combination of biology, environment, learning, um, and our personality, we have formed uh, pretty much uh, the person we are today. Now, does that mean we're set in stone? Absolutely not, or I wouldn't be in this business. <laughs> um, but unless we examine how well things are working for us today, we don't know if maybe life could be fuller or better um, or get us more what we, what we need um, and desire in our lives. Keep in mind so much of who we are, the limits and the rules and so forth uh, that we set up for ourselves and our relationships have maybe been there for a while. Maybe they're working for you, maybe they're not. This might be a time we can take a look at that. Some of us might have a little difficulty with actually setting up some healthy boundaries. Why would that be? Well, sometimes we can look at our backgrounds and if perhaps we had one that was wrought with tough parenting, maybe um, punitive parents, maybe we had some instability in the family, parents coming, going, leaving, um, maybe we've been abused, that's happened. Um, maybe we've been abandoned. Um, it may leave us with uh, feelings of fear of being abandoned. Uh, fear of losing a relationship, fear of compromising a relationship. It may make us a little unsure of who we are. Um, so because of that, we may be the kind of person that maybe we feel guilty if we say no to somebody or unhappy if um, we make someone else unhappy or we don't go along with their agenda. But what happens with this over time is we lose who we are. We don't know who we are. We've maybe shrunk to the point of going along with someone else's agenda to the point where it may not be our own beliefs, but we're going along with someone else for the pure sake of maintaining that relationship. Um, something to think about. So trusting yourself and your ability to handle issues uh, rather than defer to another's control or invasion of your boundaries is probably a wake-up call. Time for a wake-up call. We, would, we might wake up one morning and say, I don't know who I am anymore. I don't know what's important to me. I, I, I don't know what my values are anymore because they've been so invaded or compromised or changed over time. Next slide, please.
keep in mind that all of these things over time affect our thoughts and our behaviors. Um, maybe your own worst enemy is yourself and what you're saying to yourself at every juncture. Oh, that room is dirty. I better go clean it. Or, oh, I really shouldn't be sitting here. Maybe I need to you know, get up and clean the kitchen. Think about where some of this uh, feeling um, that's making you miserable may be coming from. Are you imposing those on yourself, in other words? Well, why don't we set boundaries? Again, I mentioned some of those, but many of us don't want to make other people angry. We don't like conflict. I know I don't, uh, but sometimes the tension gets a little high. Um, so you're maybe a person that goes with the flow, though it's not your flow. Um, maybe if you said no to somebody, you might feel that they think you're selfish, um, which makes you then feel guilty. <sighs> you see the conundrum we can get ourselves into um, if we have unhealthy kind of boundaries for ourselves. Um, sometimes we don't set up boundaries because we think it's not important to do so. It's okay just to give in or give up or to go along. This will be a time maybe to think about those things and think about where you'd really like to start. Some of us don't know where to start. All right, next slide, please. Now, some of you might be saying, well, my goodness, I'm 65, I'm 70 years old, I can't do this now. Yes, you can, we can all change. Um, if I didn't believe that, I wouldn't be in this business. And sometimes it's a matter of changing our thoughts and beliefs about who we are and how others might respond rather than the reality. Well, the boundaries you possess, we, we kind of look at them in terms of being very rigid, maybe too porous, or somewhere in between, which would be our healthy uh, kind of goal. Next slide, please. You might know people that have more rigid boundaries. They're the type of people that kind of keep to themselves. They're a little detached. They don't share a lot about themselves emotionally and they kind of keep others at a distance. Um, maybe they don't have a lot of close relationships. They're the people that are most unlikely to ask for help. It may be a trust issue. It may be a personality issue that prevents but often it's belief systems that keep us locked in some of these types of uh, frameworks, if you please. Um, porous boundaries by extreme opposite are those boundaries where you can't say no to anybody. Um, you really like and value maybe more than your own, other people's opinions of you um, and fear them making a negative you know, uh, judgment of you. You may fear that their rejection if you don't go along with their agenda. Um, you may also be a person that overshares personal information. In other words, maybe things that are better kept to yourself, um, those things that they really don't need to know. That's, that's a personal judgment and um, no one else can kind of decide that for you. Healthy boundaries by comparison are those that take into consideration your wants, your needs, your values. And there's no uh, compromising those if it's important to you. Um, and if someone else says no to you, you're good with that. You're good with that. Um, and your sharing of information is more appropriate. Um, you know where to stop and, and what to share and how much to share. Now, 
most people have a little bit of a mix of these. Nobody is totally one sided or another. Um, and it depends on maybe the type of information we're talking about sharing here. Um, but this is a good time to think about these issues and where you might fall on this spectrum. Well, why should I set healthy boundaries? What's in it for me? What's, what do I gain from that? Well, first of all, you're going to feel better about yourself. You'll probably feel less resentment toward others, less anger toward them for quote, making you say yes to something you really didn't want to do. Uh, you'll have more confidence in who you are and what you're doing and feel good about your choices. Um, probably there'll be less conflict with others because they're gonna, they're gonna respect and see and understand those boundaries you've erected. Um, of course, with that comes greater self-respect and self-esteem. Um, there's a difference between aggressive um, sharing of your boundaries and assertive uh, sharing, if you will. Um, being aggressive certainly makes people back up. Being assertive is strong, but it's not aggressive. So think about how you're communicating um, your boundaries. Believe me, if your needs are better met and you have more time and energy um, to do those things that nourish your spirit, you're going to be able to give more to others in a friendly, warm, compassionate way. And you'll have more body, mind, and spirit health. And the bottom line is people will understand so that the next time um, they'll know how far to go with their requests or um, forcing their ideas upon you. Uh, next slide, please. Well, there are a lot of boundaries, aren't there? And I may have let out, uh, left out spiritual on this, but um, I think the biggest one for some of us at this stage for our life, if, especially if we're in a caregiving role, is um, the time issue. Um, how much can we do? How much can we do for others? Um, how much do we own that we don't need to own? And it may be actually better given back to the person if they're able to do it. Um, there's only so much time in the day. How do you want to spend your time? By the same token, at this age, many of us are dealing with some physical limitations. You know, I'd like to think I'm superwoman, but I know I'm not as strong as I used to be, nor do I have the endurance that I did in my 30s and 40s. Um, we need to consider that when requests are made um, to us, whether it's lifting somebody, um, carrying heavy uh, equipment, um, think about what your limitations are. Uh, so that indeed you don't compromise your own health and physical well-being. Um, other boundaries, intellectual boundaries. Boy, we, we get this one quite a bit these days, uh, though I don't engage, um, around political leanings. <laughs> it's a very hot topic nowadays. Nobody agrees. It seems to be a very divisive kind of um, issue. Even my children maybe aren't on the same page. So we've agreed to disagree and not discuss it. And I think once people know that, you feel safer being who you are and holding on to your beliefs. Now, it's not to say we don't want to maybe consider other points of view. Sometimes that's fine. Listening to more than one channel on TV, it's OK. Open our minds a little bit. But what's comfortable to you is what's comfortable to you. And that should be your guide. Um, obviously, emotional, psychological boundaries are, are key. Your feelings matter. How people talk to you matters. If they talk to you in an angry, aggressive, shaming kind of voice, of course, you're going to suffer some 
serious uh, blows to your self-esteem and how you see yourself. So knowing where to draw the line on that is absolutely critical. Ethics, what's okay to do, what's not okay to do. Some people have a different mindset about that, what they think they're entitled to uh, versus what might be the better way to go uh, with terms of, in terms of humanity and um, safety and so forth. Uh, and finally, sexual boundaries. Um, you know, how much do you want to be touched? How much do you want people encroaching on your space? Um, how much, uh, you know, can you tolerate in terms of people manipulating emotions for other reasons? So think about where you stand in terms of all of these issues. Um, what you held as a teenager, high school, college may not be where you are today it may be time to take a new look um, at some of these things. And then finally, material boundaries. I'm jumping all over here, sorry. Um, your money, your possessions, how much do you want to share with others? How much do you want to give? That, that's your choice, totally, totally. All right, next slide. Please. Well, uh, when's it time for a reset? Key word here is ask your gut. And why do I say that? Well, if, if our boundaries are being violated, it sets off a reaction in us, not only emotionally, but physically. And if you are one that believes in the body being an energy field, it can result in blocked energy because stuffing feelings, when maybe you're angry, you're upset, it's really never good for your health unless that energy is released in a way that's, I guess, healthy and um, doesn't cause harm to anyone else. Um, so what do you do if you are feeling angry with somebody or some, somebody that said something you didn't like or the way they treated you? We will get to that about how to deal with that um, in terms of setting a boundary. You may be, uh, feel like you're taking advantage of uh, those people that love to come to your house <laughs> for dinner and they stay and they stay and they stay. Or you don't feel like they're ever asking you out. Um, uh, that could be uh, taking advantage of you. Um, how about if they're in your space or they're interrupting what you say all the time, cutting you off? Uh, maybe it's a tone of voice they use. So it sounds insulting or disrespectful or hurtful. Tune into your gut. How does it feel? Uh, maybe they're blaming you for something that's not your fault. Um, but they need an outlet. They, they don't want to assume any part of that blame. Um, and, and caretakers too, check how you feel, check with your body. Are you feeling exhausted? Are you stressed out? Are you burned out, overwhelmed with what you're doing? Maybe you're depressed and maybe your health is suffering. Sometimes that happens because as caregivers, we tend to put care for others maybe ahead of taking care of ourselves. And that's never a good idea because we have limited resources, don't we? Physically, emotionally, psychologically, spiritually. Well, think about maybe who it is that you feel you have the most difficulty with setting boundaries, um, under what situations, what circumstances. And decide how we want to intervene or how we want to change that scenario. Things like that generally don't get better on their own. All right, next slide, please.
This is the hard part because many of us don't take the time to really check in with ourselves, if you will. Being aware of our own wants and needs and values and feelings. Um, it's not something we tune into every day, but if something doesn't feel right, it's telling us something is not quite right. Um, respect yourself, love yourself. If you don't, nobody else is going to. Um, keep in mind that guilt, if you feel guilt, it's not gonna kill you, believe it or not. It's not comfortable, but know that you can acknowledge it, let it roll over you and move on. I think guilt is a highly, <laughs> what shall I say, a frequented emotion in many of us. We kind of fall into the tyranny of the shoulds. Are you shoulding on yourself? I should be doing this, I should be doing that. Where's that coming from? Okay, think about that. All right. Know your limits. I think we talked about that a little bit, physically, emotionally, psychologically. Know that you are responsible for your own happiness and fulfillment and you are not responsible for making someone else happy. Now you can contribute to their sense of well being, but it's not your job, it's not your responsibility to make other people or the world happy. All right, next step ask for help when you need it. Whoa, that's a big step for some of us. And if you don't ask for help, think about why you don't. Is that an admission of failure if you've asked for help? Do you think they'll be put out if you ask for help? Find out where that's being held up, if you will. Know when a problem is really yours or if it belongs to someone else. Um, I think we own too much some days. Um, maybe it's their problem to solve. Maybe you could let them know you've noticed that they might need help with something. If you, it, that's a compassionate thing to do. Um, but no, it's not yours to solve. And sometimes that's even our children, our adult children. In the world of alcohol and drugs, they call that enabling if we do for others what they can do for themselves. So know where you end and someone else begins with issues, with problems. And finally on this one, heed the warning signs. Those may be your gut feelings. It may be, um, your physical health. Um, it may be where you're finding yourself uh, in terms of your happiness, stress level, or what have you. Your feelings matter. Next slide, please. This is just a little idea about how to kind of break down, maybe delineate which values, which boundaries um, go in what column or what, what uh, category, if you will. Um, I would start with what you absolutely don't want to allow. What is your limit? Know your limits, if you will. Those that maybe you allow you don't like, but eh, it's not a supreme sacrifice. It doesn't compromise your health or, or psychological well-being. Uh, but know your values. What's truly, truly important to you? All right, and maybe somehow you could, um, from this, make a copy of that or write them down or what have you. So you can kind of uh, set the stage for thinking about this. 
Next slide, please. Well, that's all well and good, right? Um, put them down on paper, make a decision to do this. How do we let those in our immediate sphere um, understand and know that things have changed? How do we tell them? Well, this is a few uh, you, could, you could start with. Now, I'll just raise an example. Say someone's talking uh, politics or really has this extreme worldview uh, that just doesn't resonate with you. And you might say to them, well, you know, that's very interesting uh, that you see that. I, I can understand where you're coming from. I guess we see it differently and leave it at that. If they bring it up again, or they make a harassing or critical remark, um, you could say to them, I've decided not to talk about this at this time, or I feel uncomfortable with talking about this at this time. Those are very respectful yet validating uh, statements you can give to others that, you know, we'll leave it as it is. It's not putting them down, but it certainly lets them see how far they can go with you regarding certain issues. Um, or other requests of you or whatever. Um, you can use any of these kinds of statements to make your point. That's gonna take a little practice <laughs> because it may not come naturally to you at the time that it's pertinent. Um, now, uh, name calling, what have you, if it escalates to that, that's a, a, a non-player for me. To me, that's the, the point at which the conversation ends. Um, and sometimes walking away is, is okay without retaliating uh, or escalating, you know, the climate. Uh, it's probably better to do that um, if it's getting out of hand. Know what's important to you. Know what your limits are. Know what you're comfortable with. There may be some boundaries, as we mentioned, that are a little more porous. I'd rather not, I'd prefer not, but if I really have to, okay. But know that certain boundaries are gonna be just off the chart and not, not doable. Well, I think we talked about some of these, but I truly believe that we as individuals need to take responsibility and have a respect for ourselves, our beliefs, our opinions, and who, who's right and who's wrong. I mean, that's such a subjective state at times. And if you make a mistake in your belief or in your action, it's okay. A mistake is just information to do something different next time. You are separate from someone else. You are not them. And when we become a couple, we don't have to meld to the point of losing who we are. Um, your wants, your needs, your interests, your how you like to spend your time, that's okay to be who you are. So take respect, uh, uh, take responsibility for yourself and just have a healthy respect for yourself and value your own opinions. That's very easy for me to say, isn't it? It's gonna take practice. It's gonna take practice, especially if it's a very new way of operating with the world. A big one for me is heeding the warning signs. Those people that despite our attempts to set limits, they keep pushing your limits or their own agendas. There are some people in the world that are toxic and being with them is toxic and it's not healthy. This may result honestly, in some of you deciding you don't any longer want certain people in your life space. And that's okay. That's okay. 
if being near them raises your anxiety level, makes you angry, it may be worth examination in terms of whether this relationship should continue. It may not be best for you and that's okay. You want people in your sphere that support you, that love you for who you are and don't try to change you. Let me see here. So please know your limits. Again, this is gonna take a little self examination. Know that you are separate from others. You can have similar likes, dislikes and agreements, but you are different from others just by virtue of your upbringing, your personality, your biology and your life experience. You may have different values. Do not, I should highlight this one in, in big stars here. Do not accept abuse or disrespect from anybody. That is not acceptable. And the way other people see us should not depend on whether we go along with their agenda or not. Others opinion of us shouldn't matter. Keep in mind, you are enough. You are lovable. You don't need to change who you are to be loved or accepted by anybody. And it seems simplistic, but it's not. But our being is more important than our doing. In other words, proving ourselves to others, to the world. You are enough as you are. Now, if giving to others, and believe me, the Villages is very humanitarian, very giving in terms of their time, their resources to help others in need. Absolutely, if that fulfills you, if that's a value of yours, you go with that. I'm not saying don't do for others. If it's unreasonable, if it's not in your agenda, if it's something that makes you stressed out, angry, anxious, what have you, it may not be for you in terms of doing for others. This could be anything. Think on the spectrum here of things that people do for other people. You are enough. That's a tough one, isn't it? We are enough that we don't have to keep proving ourselves to others, to the world. So can you go over a little bit more about how to handle um, when someone challenges your boundaries? You know, sometimes I think, uh, people get a little worn down, you know, you may say no, or you may say not now, or you might say, I'm not ready to do that, or, but sometimes, you know, relentless, uh, drip, 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 asking the same question, or, you know, pushing, pushing those boundaries. I think sometimes, again, in, in relationships, you're trying to figure out where your boundaries are, where their boundaries are, right? And sometimes they infringe just a little bit too much. And, and it's hard to say, hey, you know, everybody wants to get along. Everybody wants to have a friend. Everybody wants to have a relationship, right? And sometimes they, as people push, push, push until they, you get so tired of saying no or not now, or, you know, leave me alone, or, you know, I'm not ready to do that, or I'm not interested, you know, especially with neighbors, you know, for instance, a lot of neighbors, I know, help neighbors, right? They start off helping just a little bit, you know, I'd be happy to get you to the groceries. Well, okay, then you want to go to the doctor's appointments, then maybe you want me to help you, you know, manage, you know, writing a check for you, and you want to help, right? And maybe two or three neighbors are getting together to help you know, Susie Smith down the street, but sometimes that begins to infringe on my retirement, right? And so setting those boundaries and saying, well, who are your people? Where's your adult children, right? So going back to how do you kind of reset and say, as much as I like you, you know, you're my neighbor, and now I need to kind of step back and say, I want to go back to being your neighbor and not really your caregiver or your, your uh, you know, asking me to take you so many places or every day going to get your mail used to be okay. But now you're asking me at three o'clock, where's your mail, right? We've, we've changed a little bit from me helping a little bit to me helping too much. 
That's a great point. Um, at times, those favors become then expectations, as you mentioned, and we can quickly fall into a habit that we didn't want to own, if you will. Um, I think looking at a person's time is absolutely critical and how we want to spend it um, at this time of our lives. And if unable or unwilling, uh, after we look at our calendars to continue doing what we started, perhaps suggesting to them alternative resources to help them if, if we can do that. Shared responsibility, as you mentioned, with other neighbors certainly can help. Um, but if sometimes starting things we don't want to continue can be a, a tough situation to get out of um, because expectations can form pretty quickly. So uh, being assertive, maybe examining what you can and can't do or want to do uh, is absolutely important on your part. Um, maybe doing something else instead that wouldn't take so much time. Um, offering alternatives, I guess, is, is the biggest response, um, whether it be community resources, other neighbors, different chores to help them with um, so that you're not locked in. That can happen quickly. <laughs>